This is Junior Jeans, the best producer in the world, and this is Producer Talk. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Junior Jeans with a J. You did. What's up, y'all? It's Mimi, and we're here with another episode of Producer Talk on Producer Culture TV. And today we have Junior Genius. Yeah. Known for working with Travis Scott, Drake, and Little Baby. So before we get into the questions, I got three icebreakers for you. You cool with that? For sure. Okay, bet. So if we have ringtones today, what would be your ringtone? My ringtone today? That's a good one. That's my favorite question. Lord have mercy. Got me down. You ever heard Maddie's Clan by um, La Russell? Mm-mm. It's a banger, go check that out. Yeah, I'm gonna go listen to that after this. That's a banger. Okay, so what would the title of your autobiography be? It is what it is. That's a good one. That's a real good one. It is what it is. Okay, so what are you too old to do but enjoy doing? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lot of things, I guess. I don't know, man. Uh, what do I do? Uh, That's why. Too many? It's too, I mean, I ain't saying it's too many, but it's just like, I don't want to be, uh... For like, are your secrets? That too, for sure, for sure. I don't want to expose all my, my, you know, <laughs> my hobbies and shit, you know, but damn, I mean, like, nah, ain't nothing. Because yeah. I'm going to say bullshit, but no, I don't be bullshit no more. <laughs> you know, it is what it is. We got to answer a third question, so what's your favorite color? Teal. Okay. That's a, very interesting. I never heard that before. That's Teal. a good one. My favorite color. So tell us about yourself. Who is June the Genius? Who is June the Genius Go. behind the producing? Go. The Go? Okay. The best out of the test. the best I ever did. And what makes you the Go? Because I'm him. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's, it's in me, not on me. You know? <laughs> Gotta feel that shit. That boy said he's him with the Period. Shit show. So what's your hobbies outside of music? Uh, I ain't gonna lie. I like the bowl. I Bro. wanted to add some bowl. I feel like I, every I producer bowl. bowl I bowl the 2A the other day. I was lit. I'm not too late. I got two eight, not 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 one eighty, two eight. That's that's crazy. Shit. Yeah, I yeah. I fuck with bowling. I mean, you know, maybe in in the art and shit like that too. You know what I'm saying? You could draw. Let me do all that. Oh. You know what I'm saying? So we be in that. And um, I don't know. Like I do what I love for a living, so I can't really just sit there and act like you know. Do anything else? You know, right. be lit more lit than that. You know what I'm saying? So listen to do what I love. So. Mm, that's a real good answer. No, so when did you start producing? Uh, I want to say like, oh four. And what like made that, you start producing? Um, like trap music, like Jeezy came out, you know, all them niggas came out, and then at the same time he had like producers that was like putting their stamp on it, like Pharrell and Lil John and like Manny Fresh and shit like that. So that kind of like made me want to do that shit. And then of course Kanye, you know, mm-hmm. he did all the college dropout shit. He just made that shit look cool. So that's what we was on. So tell us about Junior Genius. Where did that name come from? I got a big ass head. So it's like, motherfuckers was like, you a genius, you gotta be genius with that big ass head. That's the, that head. old joke. Yeah, for sure. So that's where it came from, and I just stuck with it. That's fire. So where did your tag come from? Did you put it together, or like, is that somebody saying that? No, that's my OG uh, daughter. It's mm-hmm. funny as hell, because she's a teenager now, and she be cracking me up. It's like, she grown now. Yeah. Not grown, but like, acting grown. Older, yeah. Yeah, so it should be funny to hear her voice in that mode, like eight years later type oh, shit. Oh, wow. That's yeah. interesting. How she feel about that? When she was little, she was little about it. Now she be like, with my money. And I be like, man, she is. <laughs> That's funny. Now she want them words. <laughs> yeah, man. So what was your first placement? My first placement, like, a uh, long, long time ago, uh, was Plies. Mm-hmm. Feet to the ceiling. I was, like, like 18. Long, oh. long time ago. Like, I almost said, like, oh, seven, oh, eight type shit. Take us to that feeling. Like, what was that like? I mean, your first placement at 18? It was cool. I know it was a Plies plant fan, but this is, like, when he was actually, like, lit. Lit, yeah. So it was cool, but, um... I ain't, I ain't gonna like anything I ever did, I'd be just right back to it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because you know, that's what, no, 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 nobody give a fuck about what you're doing now or what you did yesterday. They, you know, this shit like fashion, this shit forever changes. So, Every day. You know, you gotta stay in the motherfucking face. No, for sure. But, so I be, when I drop some shit, I be going to the next thing. I feel like somebody else said that in an interview. They was like, I can't even celebrate my past yeah. placement because I'm worried about what's yeah. my next one. But you should, I should not, a nigga should sometimes, you know, stop and smell the roses. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so. you should. So. Always. So, what's a placement that you didn't expect to receive, but like when you did receive it, it was like, wow, this the is Drake crazy. shit. I'm just based off of how this organic it happened. You know, just off of meeting uh, my partner uh, out there in LA and um, just getting the nigga email. I mean, you know, you know how people be capping, you know, industry shit, some, you know, yeah. exchange number so much that I'm going to let you right. back. You know, the nigga really hit me back. And it was just funny, like, I was like, I, I was like lit. And I made the beat, I made the beat for Meek Mill, and they, I guess they didn't fuck with it. So I had um, sent this a pack to my brother, sent it to his phone, and I was like, I was on 
Can I say this shit? I'm on Ozone and Perks and shit. I was just like... <laughs> you can say I, that. But I'm just saying I was just zooted outside. So I just got fresh from a plane. I went to sleep. I woke up at like like 80 calls from Toronto numbers. And I called him in the back and he FaceTimed me and put Buddy on the phone and it was up. So, you know, that shit was like something that was unexpected because I just threw that shit out there. That's hard. Yeah. So what's your relationship now with Drake? I met Drake a couple times and shit. My relationship is really more with OVO Rocks. Okay. And like the click over there and shit. But like, it's a lot of things that, you know, that are matriculating. So I can't really speak on that shit, but it's in the works. Like yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. We talked about that earlier. Can't we talk about what's going to happen? No, for sure. You got it. <laughs> let it just happen. Yeah, no, I just sure. let it drop. Be, be surprised. <laughs> so, what placement do you feel like changed your life? On um, my uh, key to the streets. Because that's okay. when I started seeing like, yeah. real money. Because I was, I was already, like, back home in Houston, I was always like a local legend. For the longest, and I had like shit locally going on, but you know that industry shit was just different from local shit. You know what I'm saying? Even in, from, in Houston, you know, it just was this different. The love is different. Yeah, yeah. So how old were you when that placement came out? Uh, what? Key to Streets. Yeah. I want to say was that six years ago? What was that six years ago? You got like 2016, 2015. So, so mm-hmm. like, like, like 25 type shit. Yeah. Did you like happen to be on the college scene? Because I know that song was like big on nah, you know, the college campuses. Think about that. That's when I was really going through some shit. I had my crib that got shot up. Oh. And I was sleeping on my pot and couch. Yeah. There was really a lot of shit going on there at that time. So high key, I didn't even know that shit was even popping until I had went to go make some moves in, uh, in Oakland. And um, we were riding around those shit. I was like, this shit on the radio. I'm like, and but it was satellite radio, so I was like, this is cat. Then oh. I went somewhere else and it was on their regular radio station. I was like, this shit popping. Then I went to the street club in the H. And um, I, I didn't know it was like that. You know what I'm saying? But like the whole time that shit was going down, I was just too busy trying to get back on my feet. You know what I'm saying? So I didn't really just... No, that was it was lit until like like eight months later type of shit. So how did it feel though? I know it had to be like motivated, like damn, I'm going through some nah, shit, shit right now. Like... No, nah, for shit show. Yeah, yeah, that's definitely what it was. So speaking of motivation, what is something that like what inspires you as a producer? I'm competitive. So like <laughs> no, nah, that's really all it be. Like this shit like a sports me. Yeah. So that's what that's what is naturally motivating me, is being competitive. I really don't need nobody to like put the battery in my back. It already be there. For sure. Now I definitely got to see bowling since you competitive. We gonna see. Oh yeah, for sure. So we gonna do anything. See. I'm gonna put together a little bowling game. We gonna see. We gonna see. <laughs> so who has been like your most influential teacher or mentor? The whole shit about it, bro. Like I ain't really never had no mentor. Like I ain't never had like I had like like niggas from the streets and shit like tell me not to do certain things because they knew I had the talent and shit. But other than that, right. like far as niggas telling me how to do music or even like walked in the business. You know, niggas really learn this shit to trial and error. You know, I got Rico now and shit, but other than yeah. that, like, never really had one, you know. So, no, I ain't gonna lie. Fuck all that. T Ferris. T Ferris okay. is my man. <laughs> T Ferris is my man. I just ain't seen that nigga in so long, but, like, that was my man. He, when I was going through all the shit I was talking about earlier, he was there for the most part, for sure. What's probably, what's probably, like, the most important lesson that he taught you? Man, really, don't, like, really, really about your emotions, you know, keep your emotions in shape. Cause you know, it's really, yeah. it's an unemotional sport, you know what I'm saying? So that's what we would have talking for the most part. And just, you know, you know, keep, keep, you know, real ones around you, you know, stay grounded, stay humble, you know? What's that you tweeted? Uh, motion without emotion? Motion without emotion. We're going to get into the tweet talk later though. Oh, shit, so that's <laughs> definitely what's going on. What do you think is the most important skill to have as a producer? Um, I feel like, um, I feel like you gotta have a lot of intangibles, but for the most part, I feel like, yeah, man, that's a good ass question. This is a good interview. Um, I worked hard on my question. Yeah, you was getting in here. <laughs> man, I feel like, um, really just, um, I feel like a mouthpiece is key. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like, it's like a lot of we all make fire ass beats, but it's about who you know. You know moving around. Yeah, moving around. So I feel, like that's, I feel like that's the most important thing. Like, don't get caught up in like being a studio rat, you know, do some groundwork too. I feel like that's the realest one. So, how important do you feel is networking? Nah, I think that shit key. You know what I'm saying? Motherfucker ain't gonna know you're selling nothing unless you know nothing that was for sale, so that's how I look at it. So what's your advice to a producer that like stays at home a lot? Get the hell out. For <laughs> <laughs> <That's it. laughs> <laughs> real. Move around. Don't be afraid. A lot of folks don't move around because they be afraid to tell, you know, get told no. Right. And they're afraid to fail you. But my whole point is that what's up when you doing it if you're gonna be afraid to get told no, you know what I'm saying? That's the worst thing you could be told. I be uh, I be meeting motherfuckers that be way more talented than me. I, not even cap, I'm like, bro, what the fuck? Why you here? But yeah. it's because they scared. You know what I'm saying? I ain't never been scared when it comes to this shit. You know what I'm saying? So this what it is. I ain't never be like like I, I feel like I'm the best because you got to feel like that about yourself. But like, like I said, like a nigga, like always doing this. You know, so you okay. can't be scared. You know, for sure. 
So how was it being signed to Think It's a Game during this time? It was cool. It was what it was. What it was. It was. It was. You know, we made made history. Made bangers. Shot the fly. Shot that everybody else part of it. You know, it was a chapter in my life. You now we on the new shit. New chapters, new beginnings. This shit, sure. So tell us the story of how the Everyday We Lit record came about. Mm -hmm. Okay, so remember I told you, like I was going through all shit back in Houston, mm -hmm. and um, really um, I was moving around and like really laying low and shit, and um. Me and Lucia was really close at the time and shit. And I really just sent him a pack. And he was like, well, I got a surprise for you. I was like, what you mean? He's like, bro, you got another one. I was like, oh, for shit, show. So he sent it right back to me. And and really, I didn't even like the song. I thought shit was lame. I thought it was like, what? I ain't gonna lie. I thought that shit was like, really like, corny. I'm like, every day, I'm like, what? That shit was lit, come like, on. I'm from Houston, so I don't know. I just, it's like, that music different. Yeah, so I was just like, this shit all right. You know what I'm saying? Really how Key, Key the Streets was just all right to me too. But when you see, People like fuck with it, fuck with it, make you fuck with it. So you know, motherfucker can brainwash and shit. Mm -hmm. But like that shit was busting out here. Yeah, no, it was busting. And, and Nick got paid for it for sure. But I'm just saying, like, and it's a blessing for sure. Yeah. But it's like, um, when it came out, I just wasn't just like lit about it as, as everybody else was. I'd be like, damn. Like I said, I'd be like going to the next thing, you know. Yeah. yeah Did your excitement like ever go for it though? Not really. Maybe when you seen the checks. That's yeah. like, bro. That's what I said, because I need so much in this mode. Like, don't get, don't get it fucked up. When you go to the club and you pop your shit, yeah. that should be fire. Like, you know, yeah. the bottles coming, the ambiance. Now, that should be lit. Like, this my shit, yeah. Yeah, this my shit. You know, but other than that, like, like I said, you get tired of hearing that shit, you just be going on to the next thing. Yeah. Hey. So, what's the difference in Houston music culture slash industry and, like, Atlanta culture uh, slash industry? I feel like I hear everybody really, it's more, it's a, you got infrastructure out here. Yeah. It's a real infrastructure out here. It's, you know, everybody come out here. You know, it's Black Hollywood, so a lot of motherfuckers will be coming here ain't even from out here. Like, you ain't from out here, I ain't from out here. Nobody you know what I'm saying? So that's another thing about the H. Everybody from the H is from the H. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So that's one thing. And a lot of people are starting to come out there. You know, it's like the next... Oh, yeah. I don't want to say because we, we Houston, you know what I'm saying? Outside of Lottie. I mean, so we want to say it's the next Black Hollywood type shit. Because it's, 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 it's going to go down. And the thing is, because I'm going to get the crib back out there because it's just really going to go down. Like I said, I'm the truth out there. Like. I'm the one out there, so it's just, it just makes sense to put everything under one roof and, you know, kick ass. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So, do you feel like you're more productive in Houston or Atlanta? Yeah, Houston. It's a vibe. Like, every hit I done made, I done made it in Houston. I didn't know that shit to my pot of stuff and shit. Like, every beat I done made that was a hit. Like, I done made shit in Atlanta that was, like, placements and shit, but every hit I done made was in Houston. And I didn't realize that shit to my pot of stuff and shit, because like, it's like, it's just something about the city, like, it's the energy, it's my vibe. Like, well, I hear I really come to chill, like, to, like, to, like Laid back, like my crib, I'm way out there in the middle of nowhere. It's like real laid back and quiet. So I really come out here to decompress and charge and, like, you know, charge up and shit. But, like, you know, for the most part, that's what it be. Yeah, you got a real love for your city. Maybe no, I need to go to Houston with you. I did not have fun in Houston. <laughs> Who'd you go? I, did not have fun I ain't gonna, I kind of feel the way. You might have to go. You have to run I that shit. I was my artists and we did not have fun. Who's like, your the artist? studio. See your trail. Oh, well, okay. And then the studios, like, there's maybe. I ain't gonna lie, we don't got no fire. I'm gonna say, like, maybe they like, like, come from here. You come from this shit to out there, hell yeah. no. Like, those studios, like, they got, like, Wild Road, Sugar Hill. They have no cookies. Yeah, yeah, we went to Sugar Hill. I didn't oh, yeah, like sugar, it. Sugar Hill. No cookies, no blankets, no nah, water. No, I ain't gonna lie, they got re no. <laughs> <laughs> That's that was my niggas over there, Sugar Hill. So at the end of the day, because they didn't give me free studio time. But at the end of the day, it was like, nah, if you're not the spot, like, I feel like I said once. The shit amps up. Like I said, we got a lot of time. Are we spoiled over here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Let's go down. Like, motherfuckers just got a bit more studios out there. That's all. I feel So, what's your top five studio essentials? Damn. Studio essentials? Mm -hmm. Um, We. Of course. Um, My laptop, mm -hmm. of course. My niggas. My homegirls. No, just my team. Nice. I, like, I like having vibes around me. Like, that's what I'm saying. When you say, like, when I be at home, if I be there just by myself, I got a, like a. Like a two story house, it be boring as fuck, make it be snap bitch. I be feeling like the fan of the opera, you know what that is? Like, the mother yeah. me and that bitch by himself in the big ass. Like, that's how, how I be it. feeling. Yeah. So, I like being around people so I can feed off energy. And then, like, I like people, like, I like to read them and see what's hard and what's not hard. You know what I'm saying? Because that's yeah. really what it's for. I'm making shit for the people anyway. So, what's your cookout process like? You know, some people start with drums, some people start with melodies. Like, how? Um, it depends on what type of beat I'm making. Like, if I'm making, like, some trap shit or, like, some. Memphis shit or just some shit that required a lot of anyway, I always start with the drums first. If it's like with some melodic shit or like some R&B shit, I'll, I'll start with the melody first. Because mm. that's, you know, that's what's more important. So what do you feel like makes you different from most producers? 
it's me waking up every day, yeah. So I'm June James. It's different. Like, and I even that like high key is like, you know how like producers like none of the style of shit I produce, none of the two shit sound the same. Like I don't have like You don't have a set sound. Yeah, I'm music. eclectic. So I feel like that's what, you know, keep me moving. You know what I'm saying? I can you can, that's good though, you can switch at any time. Exactly. Right. I feel like most producers are always trying to figure out how to switch up their sound, but you don't have to do no, that. No, I don't ever have to do that. I've always been and I feel like that's a gift and a curse too sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but it is what it is. I can't you know, change being me, that's me. Yeah, for sure. So what's the top two moments of your career? That's a, gonna be a hard one. Oh. Yeah. Damn. I knew that was gonna be a hard one. Oh, we got that Grammy now. Well, we didn't win the Grammy, but we got the Grammy now for your same A nomination is crazy, y'all. Right. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's, that was lit. And then, like I said, my first hit single, that was a big deal. Like, you know, just seeing the whole transition from going to being, like, local and being in the streets and, you know, just being in the actual industry. That was a hell of a move. Yeah, those are two real key. Yeah. You know, you figure that out real fast. You know, Ooh. most people would just still be sitting here like, damn, I don't know. He got me a couple times. I feel like I'm just skipping <laughs> through these motherfuckers. No, you're doing good, though. Like, he just coming back at me, but... <laughs> So you once said that what? I once said he got quotes. Yeah, I I study. That's why I told you I come crazy with the questions. I'm studying. But yeah. you once said you fuck with producers and engineers, but rappers are weird. So yeah. like, give me an example of like, a weird encounter that you had. Oh um, damn! What's you don't gotta say no name, but like, yeah, okay, okay, yeah. okay. Damn, it really just be the aftermath how they just carry this somebody move, but like um. Nah, we cooking up and shit, and then the motherfucker just coming, that motherfucker just turn everything down. And it's like, yeah, I'm such and such, and I'm here to work, and such and such, let's get to it. I'm like, bro, like, you didn't even introduce yourself here. Like, who the fuck? Is it? I know who you are, but goddamn, like, it's protocol. So, like, just lame shit like that, you know what I'm saying? Like, don't get me wrong, there's some, there's weird producers too, there's weird people in every little lane of that shit, but like, I just feel like some are certain motherfuckers. Another weird thing, nigga, we, we, in, um, we in New York, and um, I'm working with a rapper that was with TIG. And we upstairs, and he couldn't know New York rapper coming in, motherfucker. And I ain't never seen shit like this before. So, like, we recording Whoop the Whoop, and he came with like a gang of niggas. You know, you know how rappers do. That's nothing, I'd be like, damn, or whatever. The whole day. So, he came with the whole entourage. So, then we recording, and all of a sudden, you just hear boop, 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 boop. And we think it's like some op shit going on. These niggas fighting each other. I ain't never seen a group of niggas fighting each other. So, I thought okay. that was weird. I'm like, y'all niggas fighting each other? Like, yeah, hey, that's real weird. Y'all ops. Yeah, so that's that's the point of my man, the artist, he had to go. Like, he's like, man, my these niggas is drunk, they full of that shit, they fight. I'm like, these niggas is crazy. Yeah. So, I was just, it was just extra shit, real life shit like that. His circle let him down. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. So, I want to know well, this is more so for like upcoming producers. Like, give me like a bad experience you had, like, learning the business and the industry, and how did you deal with it? Yes, I've been through it. Hella crazy shit. I this, this, this signing, this one on one, this signing shit without like having proper representation. You know what I'm saying? I signed shit when I was 18. They had me like looking crazy when I was an adult. You know what I'm saying? So right. it's just like just be mindful and like the blessing about being in it, like you know, it was 2022. So it's like a lot of shit you don't know that you can't find out. You can find out now that a nigga couldn't find out 14 years ago. Yeah. So I feel like everything's at your fingertips. But like you know, don't be quick to rush. No, don't. I mean, I know a lot of motherfuckers might be broke or going through some certain situations, but don't be quick to just sign some shit just based off the bread. I, you know, that's what I would tell them up for real. And I think that's key advice because a lot of people just be signing stuff and don't be paying attention mm -hmm. to what just they Just desperation, just, you know. Yeah, just trying to get a quick bag. Yeah, and they, they be and stuck they, for Exactly, life. and they have a perception of how things are supposed to go until they get in that shit and, you know, be the other, the other way around. No, for sure. So, what was... Okay, I'm going to change my question. What was your weirdest encounter? What a producer, what was that like? The weirdest encounter on the producer? Yeah, and did it affect like the business? Oh, on some business shit? Oh. Um, I mean, if you got two different stories, you can give us both. I'm trying to think, man, because I really, I mean like, because I really just fuck with my core group of people, mm -hmm. and like for the most part, I'm not, I'm not saying I'm not friendly, but like, you know what I mean? Like, I keep shit close-knit, but um, well, I really built the weird shit back at home. Like, when I do, like, work with industry people, like, you know, it really don't be just weird. It, it be like, you know, it be like, what's the word for I don't want to say, can I say dick measure? Like, the meaning like. You can. <laughs> meaning like, like, this nigga think he the goat, I think I'm the goat. So it be like a whole bunch of like, yeah, nigga, like, one time niggas some weird ass shit. So I didn't even want to pull up on the nigga. My, my pocket, well, rock so he was like, I pull up on this producer, we go fuck with him, go fuck with him. So I pull up on him and like, he faded. I'm not, I'm, you know, I'm completely sober, so I'm knowing this nigga face. So he just slurring, moving around, feeling himself, woo -woo. nigga, I got this going on, do 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 what you got going on? So I'm playing shit, but I'm playing like old shit. I'm not really trying to play all my new shit because niggas be, you know, jagging and shit. So 
I'm seeing him making like weird goofy faces like on some like hating shit. But then when I stopped playing this shit, I started playing certain things, he go back and dick riding up, bro, you killing me, you going crazy. I'm like, bro, you really a hoe, bro. Like I saw yeah, that, that shit, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and then after that, then after that, then after that, like was trying to kick it with me, fuck with me, but I'm like, I peeped that shit, so it's like yeah. weird, you know what I'm saying? So just lame shit like that. That was lame as fuck. Now he thought yeah. you was lame in him. Yeah. He thought you was up. He was trying to get in. Yeah, he was just, hey, he was really on some dry age and shit, but it'd be what it be. That shit lame as hell. So have you ever had like a case where like, you know how like a lot of people go through stuff with like loop makers, stuff yeah, like that? Yeah, we just went through it uh, earlier this year. Um, we had a place with Stunfall Vegas. And this stuff about Vegas, like, I'm not, he's not Drake, so, you know, that budget different. So, a nigga tried to come through, you know, the loop nigga, whoever it was. And I, and apparently, they hot, right? So, they came and tried to attack, so, we ended up not even dropping the motherfucker. The motherfucker like, didn't even come out. So, it'd be oh, like that, yeah, though. Yeah, that's lame. That's why I be just, like, trying to keep shit with this. That's why it's key to have a team, niggas. Yeah. Keep your shit in house and sign niggas to you and shit versus just you freelance and shit. Cause these niggas is weird. That's, yeah. I feel like the loop makers are the weirdest ones nowadays. They are. Because they send us all the same shit. And then they be wanting this crazy amount of money, like they're the ones putting in the work to get the placement, which is really the hardest part. Like I'm not saying that what you no, did that important, but like placements don't come like niggas. How many albums drop a year? I mean, like ones that are decent that really can give you some money and like get some get you some clout or some you know press going. Not that many. So all these spots be like you know really be precious. So it's like nigga, you trying to tax and shit, but I'm really blessing you, yeah, yeah, for real. No, for sure. So if you knew everything you know now, what would you do differently? Everything I do now, I'm so confused about that question. Everything you know now. Everything I know now, what would I do differently? Yeah. I'm doing it. I'm doing differently now. No, What's but like if you, if you had all the knowledge you had now, but you could go back to when you were That's okay. It's a lot of Yeah, okay, yeah. I'll be rich as hell. I'll be way rich. <laughs> <laughs> we'd be rich in the missions, motherfucker. We'd be doing this in my mansion somewhere. <laughs> For sure. For real. So you know, this is what it is. But you know, they they don't age with success now. We're gonna get to what we gotta get to and how we're gonna get to it. This, the experience is what makes you go. No, nah, facts, for real. I would trade in it for the world. It's your testimony, too. Yeah. Yeah. So I use my experiences to motivate motherhood that might be under me or going through some shit so they can get to the next level. So that's how I look at it, too. Mm. Yeah, that's yeah. a good way to look at it. So, what is one piece of advice that you have for upcoming producers? Get out the house, move around. You know, Sancho said said early. And, you know, trust your gut. You know, and just, just trust that, you know, that the shit really. As cliche as it's become, it's, it is a marathon. Like, this shit don't just happen how you supposed to, how it's supposed to happen. You know what I'm saying? Just keep moving, you know, and have faith for the most part. Okay, so now we're going to get into Twitter talk. So, yes, I do my research, y'all. So, yes, I go find the old tweets. Got to yeah. bring it up. Old tweets. The old tweets. I got to bring it up. It, that shit. This one actually not old, though. You tweeted this, like, I'm not going to lie. This is how you know I really do my research because I went back and checked your Twitter again. You tweeted, don't come with a bag biting the hand that feeds you. Right, facts. And that's it. And this tweet at the day. Yeah. On me. That's because it's just, that's just real talk. Like, you know, like, you see a lot more people, people get like, I ain't gonna lie. Like, my partner told me some real shit. Like, when you help a, the more you help a nigga, the more he like, he like, the more he hates you. Like, being like, you know, we all got egos as men. So, like, I got a lot of people I that helped out or like looked out for that, like, the more I help them, the more they resent me. You know what I'm saying? And then the show that True Colors try to, like, click hop and try to get on. So I'll be just basically like, bro, don't bite the hand that feeds you. You know, you from, you know, not knowing if you stay down, it's so much could, things. We can all be up. Yeah, we can all be up. But especially in the industry, you have so many people. I, I, I've been seeing this since I first started. Like, you see people that just come around just to be around. And then they see somebody else doing something. So they want to go They go from here to here to here. So, like, just don't fumble the bag. You know, bite the hand that feeds you, man. Like, you know. Stay humble and you know, be appreciative. You know, a lot of people be feeling entitled to thinking that they you, but you're not my peer. Like, you you, you my nigga, and I fuck with you, but you're not me. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, we got to get me right so we can get there. You know what I'm saying? It's like me being an athlete. Like, we all going to make sure that he's straight so he can get to the league so the whole team can be good. Right. So everybody, be yeah, everybody want to be Joan. Everybody can't be Joan. I'm Joan. <laughs> <laughs> the egos be a little too big, you know? Yeah, it'd be crazy. So, what are some challenges that you face coming up as a producer? Um, Just getting my sound out. Um, consistency, I think consistency is key. Um, I think those are two key things, getting my sound out. And really just like, but I feel like you never stop mastering your sound. I feel like, you know, you yeah, like, yeah, always going to be perfect with album, but like, I feel like getting like a sound that was like, tailored, like making like making hits. I feel like I'm like a home run hitter. Like, I mean, I'm not saying I'm going to hit or miss, but like, I make hits, man. I know how to make big shit that sound big. So I think that was what it was about for me, you know, not just making shit that just was like, that shit cool, but like, I want to make sure that like, man, what the fuck was that? Like, where the fuck you get that from? I just want to be different. So like I said, it's a gift and a curse too, because 
sometimes it might be too different from a motherfucker. Like, I'd be having beats that might kick your ass. Like, there's too much going on. It's too big for me, you know? I mean, I feel like no beat is too big. You just gotta find the right you gotta artist. Gotta find the right artist. That's key. So, we, I'm gonna end with this tweet because I feel like this is real important because I'm a real spiritual person. Right. So, when I was looking at your tweets, I noticed that you tweeted, thank God for today, like every multiple day. times a day. Every day, day. Yeah. every day, because I'm thankful every day. Right. I feel like you gotta know, I'm really legit blessed. I wake up do whatever I wanna do, how I wanna do it. My kids straight, everything good. So, why not be grateful now? Why not give thanks, you know? Have you always been like so spiritual and close with God? Yeah, facts, not facts. I was raised like that. I don't go to church. I ain't okay. cap, be like, I pray every day. I pray every day, you know, I read the Bible you know, from time to time. I'm, I'm deeply rooted when it comes to that type of shit because I know I ain't doing it by myself. And how do you feel like your faith has helped you with your career? It get me through everything. You know, the ups and the downs, you know, it keep yeah. me humble and it keep me it keep me motivated too. You know what I'm saying? For real. That's dope as fuck. Well, guys, that concludes our interview Ooh. today. Thank you, June, for coming out. And thank Appreciate you for having you. me. No, for sure. Ooh. Of course.